Hi, my name is Kathleen Yor from Art Doll. I would like to welcome you to this puppet making tutorial and to say I am really looking forward to going on this creative journey with you. I have really enjoyed bringing my work to Beverly Puppet Festivals in the past. Some of you may have seen Seaside Terror, my adult horror show, or a long time ago, my family puppetry show, The Worried Walrus. So we're going to be making a style of hand puppet that I have never made before with materials that are new to me but which can be found easily in local shops or online for example eBay. Whatever puppets I make the process always involves a level of problem solving, patching up mistakes and lots of patience. So this tutorial is designed to allow you to take it at your own pace. You might want to just skip through bits, make something super quick, it doesn't matter. Or you might want to just take your time doing little bits over a period of weeks, it's completely up to you. And if you find ideas or ways of doing something that is different from what I do, that's great, go with it. Equipment you will need is a saw for cutting wooden dowels, some assorted sandpaper, I'd use fine on the polyfiller and a rougher sandpaper on the clay that we make, some wire cutters, a bowl for making clay and a hand uh, blender if you have one, although that's not essential but it does make the job quicker, a ruler, some painting equipment, I'd go for some, ideally some fine brushes for doing eyeballs and I like to use soft sponges for blending, a pen some scissors, some clay sculpting equipment. Uh, this can be brought, but it can also just be stuff you find around the house, whatever you like to use to sculpt with, and some sewing gear. Materials wise, you're gonna need some PVA glue, a two-part epoxy resin glue, which you can get really cheap from B&Q or online, some polyfiller. If you have it and you like to use it, you can use a bit of impact adhesive. I won't be using this in this tutorial, but if you like to use a glue gun and you have it to hand and you find you need it for certain aspects, you can use that. You're gonna need some scraps of material and I've got bits of stuffing to make the bodies with. So you've got a little bit of uh, cushion fluff there, a bit of old foam. You're gonna need some really sort of thick wire, some wire rod. I just purchased some wire coat hangers from online and I cut them and straighten them out into my wire rods like this. You also need some wooden dowel. I've gone for a 15 millimeter thickness and you're gonna need about five inch in length of wooden dowel. If you don't have dowel, you can use wooden spoons, paint brushes, uh, pencils, uh, so it's not essential, but it is ideal if you have it. Um, you're gonna need your prime colors in acrylic and a polystyrene ball for the head as a base if you like, but if you don't have that, you can just use the clay that we're gonna make, so that is also not essential. I also like to collect beads, buttons, uh, different eyeballs that I purchase online just um, so I can apply the eyes as I'm making. Uh, so things that you can use materials to stick on and add features to your characters are really good. And you're gonna need one to two cups of flour. The first stage of the creation process is to decide what you want to make. You might know straight away, maybe there is something you've always been interested in, or you have a creative itch you've always wanted to satisfy. Um, that's great. My advice would be to really go with your gut instincts. Often the best ideas are the first ideas. But you might have no idea whatsoever. Perhaps you're working from a total blank slate, which is a great place to start some research. So, where do you start? You might be interested in exploring something from your own life. Perhaps a simple memory. A significant happening. This might lead to an exploration of a theme of some kind, perhaps love that is lost, uh, friendships, having children. I think that in puppetry and visual theatre, if you can start with something very simple, this is a good place to start because then you can enhance it through complicated design, detailed choreography. Um, you might be inspired by a song 
or um, a painting, a photograph, some poetry. You might like to start with a stock character, maybe a posh businessman, a bearded lady, uh, a badger, could be anything you like. Now, I started by exploring fairy tales, folk tales, myths and legends. And I was particularly interested in the way they related to nature. Somebody once told me that in regards to research, what the audience see is just the tip of the iceberg, but underneath there is this vast amount of stuff that we have gone through in order to create this performance. My advice to you is to not spend too much time on this. Don't get bogged down by the reading, just be decisive. Choose one thing and then we can go into detail. I've made the decision to call my project Banshee, so I'll be exploring the folklore around this character. I'll also be incorporating the wind and the soil as my natural elements and they will be explored fully later through the choreography, the set and the sound. So looking at puppetry design, I tend to collect visual references, I draw pictures, I visit fabric stores just to get a general feeling for the types of characters I want to create. I then devise a building plan, which you guys don't need to do because I'm going to do it for you, and I generate a materials list. I suggest you order them straight away. Everything on the list should be able to be found in your local supermarket or click and collect at B&Q. At the end of all this, you're going to want to decide who are your characters, how many are you going to make and what do they need to do. So for me, I'm going to make four human characters and five heads. The first two I'm going to make are going to be two operated together using both hands together. So they're going to have fixed heads. I'm interested in the way two hands can play together. They're my younger characters. I'm going to have a soft kind of pinky creamy female and then a grey kind of light blue younger male. Then I'm going to have an older man, he's going to be stiff, a little bit ugly, quite rich and he's going to be operated by two hands, a uh, nice head for some uh, nice articulation there. Then over here I'm going to have my Banshee character, she's going to have a really interesting kind of costume and she's going to have two different heads. One head's going to look a bit sad or remorseful, the other head is going to look absolutely terrifying. I'm not going to use black gloves as a puppeteer because I'm interested in the, the raw hands, the kind of articulation that these hands can express and I think as an audience it's quite nice to see that ah oh, it's just hands in there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our basic layer. This is the, the, the kind of the base shape from which we're going to build upon. It's going to be like our puppet body. So you're going to need to find some material around the house. Um, I just so happen to have this kind of fleece stuff. I had a lot of this. Now what you ideally want is something thickish that's going to keep some shape. So um, first of all, you're going to want to decide which hand you are working with, which, which, so if you're, just be aware of mine, if you're using your left hand, you're going to be using your right hand to do the head. So I'm going to make one of each, I'm going to make a left and a right. So just be aware, before you um, print and cut out this template, this has been made to measure my hand. If you've got a smaller hand, you're going to want to open up the JPEG in your computer and scale it up or down according to your um, your measurements of your hand. So, but you're going to want to keep those proportions. So, if, for example, you have a seven centimeter width hand, then you're going to need to take off 2.5 centimeters from the JPEG width and length and then print it out um, or increase it if you've got a larger hand. First of all, we're going to make the left hand human. So you're going to take your material like this and you're going to take your pattern and we're going to do the left and the right. Um, you can just trace around both of them like this. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're gonna be making the left hand first. So you're gonna to need to line up on your pattern. And you've got some sewing points here. So just making sure it's as on the pattern as neat as you can and just to mark where that point is and the point over there. Staying a little inside the line is better because we can always sew more but once we've sewn it's harder to unsew. So this is fingers here top left so we go like this so this is going to go like that. So we're going to sew this part first. So you're going to turn it inside out because then it's going to look nicer when we sew it. And you're going to sew from the end here to your marker point. Okay, so I've just sewn along here so you can turn it upside down and just have a quick check. So this line here always runs along there and this is on the wrist just to save confusion. So we're going to be sewing along this part now. So we're going to spin this around back to the side you've just been sewing and you're going to just look at the edge, line them up as much as you can, hold your thumb just there and that's going to be the end there. We're going to spin that around. That's going to go where your thumb was. So then we can sew neatly along this edge here. There we go. Okay, so that is perfect for my wrist. Nice and loose, not too baggy. Um, if, if it is loose, um, you want it a bit loose, obviously, to get your fingers through, but you can make um, some little adjustments to the side um, just so that it feels good for you. The standard position for the, the character is holding the two fingers like that and the thumb there and like that. Now, as you notice, when I do that, we lose some of the shape here. So I have given you a little bit of a semicircle shape here and you can cut that out and then you can kind of look at attaching onto here have a look at the seam from there to there and just hold on to that there and then what you're going to do is you're going to just sew that from there downwards Okay, so there we have our left hand lady. She should be looking a little bit better now we've got that on there. I'm gonna make the right hand one now. I'm gonna line this up as much as possible. Exactly the same as before. So I've got my right hand man here. Um, but what I want to do is I want to give more of a sense of shape for him. I want to add some shoulders, um, just a sense of shoulder. He's going to be quite a rich kind of businessman, quite um, a well-established, uh, respectful kind of fella. So he's going to have some sort of shoulder pads. I've just cut a shape out there. So here we have a basic structure from which to build upon for our two characters. So we're going to have a look at creating a creature. So you have this template. So I've cut my piece out of my material from my template and I'm going to line it up again as I did before. And the important dot you need to make is this dot just here to your left. So this lines up, this goes over the thumb like that and that line is going to be sewn along there so that it's going to be that way around for the right hand but what we're going to do is we're going to turn it like that and we're going to use that dot to sew from and sew all the way along there like that.
Okay, so we've just finished sewing along the first line here. I'm going to turn it inside out. And I'm going to put your hand in there. Thumb comes through this bit here. So pulls nicely along there. This bit is going to be sewn across this edge here. Mark up that edge there, just so you know where you're happy with it. So I'm just going to mark mine roughly about there. Then I'm going to turn it inside out and look for my mark and I'm going to sew along here. Okay, so I've just finished sewing along there across the top of the thumb line. I'm going to turn it inside out and just check the fit. If you've got a problem with the wrist here, you can um, cut in and re-sew just to make sure your wrist fits okay. Um, try to avoid cutting too much off because uh, this can be adjusted later once we add design and stuff onto it. We can build stuff upon this as a basis. So there's your creature. So now it is time to decorate your puppet body and there are many ways that you can do this. So I went around the house and I collected piles of different coloured fabrics. I know one of my characters, I wanted them to be, use blues, I've got pinks, I've got greys and blacks and creams. I was interested in the way different textures and feels kind of fit together. So I started working in a kind of patchwork way by kind of just sort of putting down a material and having a look at what works and what shapes work and how I kind of want it and then I sewed them all together to create uh, sort of little costumes that are a bit like this. Um, this can take a long time um, so you might want to opt for something easier like here we've got a nice just one bit of fabric that's kind of attached over it. This bit of old dressing gown here was really easy to sew on but I was really interested in the different colours that kind of fit together and the shapes that kind of work around here. Um, if you're using a thin material like this it will fray so you can use a lighter just to kind of gently um, sort them edges out there but be very careful because it can distort the fabric so be very gentle with it. Uh, so it's a bit of trial and error, it takes a bit of time, but you might be happy with your, your base material, in which case you don't have to bother with this at all. You might be interested in exploring adding some shapes, so you might get some foam, you might add a stomach. Um, you can get some foam like sponges and stuff from the supermarket, or you might have an old bit of something hanging around that you can use. I would just then tack that with a bit of thread either side just to hold it in place and then build my material around it. Um, as you can see here, this has got a nice belly on it and I really I really like that shape actually. Uh, I wish I'd done it for my, my first guy, but you know, I suppose he's, he's younger when he's got that, so it's all right. <laughs> he hasn't got as much weight. One thing I'm gonna do with this, my Banshee character, is I want her to float. So I don't want her to have any legs and I want her to have this kind of skirt that's kind of a nice shape, floaty shape to it. So I got this wire and I thought what might be interesting is to kind of like, attach this material around this wire and kind of sew it around the wire. So anything goes here, you know, we've got everything, ribbons, different things, it's totally up to you. This is your time to kind of go wild and be experimental. You can use anything you like. So we're gonna make our base head. What you're gonna to need to do first of all is decide on the size that you want. What I've done is I've drawn roughly my puppet body on a piece of paper and then I draw roughly the size of the head that I like on that. Now, you're gonna to need to start quite a lot smaller because we're gonna build upon this sculpt on it, so it's gonna get quite a bit bigger, so start small. You're gonna need PVA, water, flour, tissue paper, and a small cup. Before we make the clay, we're gonna to need to determine how much we need to make. So if you've got a polystyrene ball, you're going to need enough to cover this and enough to build upon. So I'd recommend one cup's worth of clay. If you're making your bowl from scratch, you're going to need that and enough to sculpt from. I'd recommend two cups worth. But what I'd always say is possibly make a little bit more than you imagine you need just in case. So we've got a bowl of hot water, we've got tissue paper. I'm going to start putting it into the hot water. 
you're going to probably need quite a lot. We're going to test how much we need, squeezing it out, squeezing it out, and we're just going to squeeze it into the cup, and this will determine, give it a really good squeeze, so that's not quite a cup's worth yet. Once we get to that cup's worth, we've got enough, and that's how much tissue paper we need. So to measure numerous cups, what I'm doing is I'm putting a cup's worth into there and then I'm creating a new cup's worth so that I can build up how many cups I want. Then when I'm finished, I'm going to pour it all back into there and I'm going to work it into a tissuey paste. So rather than spending hours and hours working this with your fingers because it needs to be really fine, you might want to try using a hand blender. So I'm going to give this a go and see how it works. Because we want it to be completely disintegrated. So I've been working this now for about 10 minutes with my food processing blender. Um, we want it as fine as we can because when it comes to sculpting, we need, we need the particles to be very small so we can get a nice detailed sculpt. So once we've done that, we're gonna add just under a cup's worth of flour. That's gonna help bind it all together. So it's a, it's per cup of tissue paper, it's just under a cup of flour. So I'm gonna need to add four of these in here. So we're mixing the flour in, and again, you might wanna use your hand blender just to make that really fine. So we've been working the flour in there for a while, but what we're gonna to need to do now is get rid of some of this liquid um, because it's far too wet. So we're gonna put it into a sieve, like this, and we're gonna just work the liquid out like that. We have to take our time with this. Okay, so I've been squeezing that and squeezing it until we've got this kind of soft, kind of um, moist mixture. And then it's a case of rolling it into as neat a ball as possible. So you've made your ball as neat as you can. You're now gonna stick it in the oven on a baking tray for 100 degrees for around an hour and a half. When you take it out, just feel that it's not soft in the middle. You may have had too much water in your ball. It needs to be nice and dry and solid. So you've worked all that water out and we've got this nice kind of damp material. Now we're gonna make the clay which we're gonna to use to cover the polystyrene ball and use to sculpt our faces with. So you're gonna need under a cupful of PVA per ball that you're making. Just pour that in there. And then you're gonna need half a cup of polyfiller. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, this is if you've got polyfiller, this is not essential. Um, it's only if you've got it and if you, wanna, if you want to add that in, just add some extra strength. And what we're gonna do is you're just gonna slowly work that in there. Okay, so you've worked your PVA and some polyfiller in there um, until you've got this lovely kind of hummus texture. Then what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to just very gently layer on your polystyrene ball, flatten it out, and you want quite a thin layer. I'd go for about half a centimeter, just very carefully covering all of your ball. So what might be helpful while you're covering this ball is just to just pop a bit of wire in there, something to hold it, and then you can just work your way around it carefully. You want the ball to be as neat as you can um, because this is going to prevent having to sand it later. But we are going to sculpt over it so it doesn't need to be too perfect but uh, just take your time and get it as neat as you can. So I've got my heads dry in here. You're going to have to leave them overnight so that they go nice and hard. I've created a nice little drying contraption out of a toilet roll and some tape. Just keeps them in place. While you're here I'd recommend making a few different sizes of eyeballs. You might already have your own eyeballs that you like to use or you might just be painting it into the sculpt. Don't worry about it for now but what I'd recommend is just make a few different sizes that we can play with later when we're sculpting. The rest of your clay material can go in an airtight container in the fridge. Okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sculpt our face. Now 
If you're using the homemade clay that we created earlier and you're feeling confident, you can start building straight onto your ball. However, if you're like me and you've never used this material before, uh, I would highly recommend you begin with a maquette. If you have clay at home, this is a really good way of starting to explore the face. So the reason why I begin with a clay maquette is it allows me to explore the potentials of the face, to play with the features and to experiment with emotions. Um, we can then transfer the, the features onto our new sculpt. We can use it as a very clear guideline. So I'm gonna talk you through a couple of my sculpting techniques that I've developed, which I really hope will enable you to create a sculpt that you are really happy with. So first of all, you're gonna need a firm base to rest your head on. Um, I'm just gonna put a bit of clay around there and rest my head on there. And you're just gonna go ahead and just give a nice, covering to your head. My sculpting tools consist of a small diggy outy thing, a pointy pointy thing, a round diggy outy thing and a slightly larger scoop and this is my most prized item. It's a small paintbrush with a pokey thing at the end and a brush at the end for smoothing out clay. This is highly useful so I've got a range of different sizes there depending on what I need and highly recommend a water bottle just to keep the clay nice and moist. So keeping your Google images and pictures to hand for a reference um, and making sure that you can easily move your sculpt around. We're not going to focus straight on all the time uh, the puppet needs to operate at different angles so it's nice to keep it moving looking at all angles so I'd recommend just by beginning just um, adding a couple of basic features so I'm just gonna add in a nose So you're just kind of having a little look at the kind of nose there. Um, start adding in some lips. So you're just kind of creating the rough features of the face to begin with. So when you're adding these features, think about everything. Think about eyebrows, think about cheeks. Um, we're gonna just slowly build the texture up on the face. Okay, so we are slowly adding features. Again, it's just messy at this point, nothing too detailed. Think about the forehead. So there's something occurring here already. So this line here coming up here, I quite like that. So in my sculpt, I'm going to kind of enhance that line there. I like that that arch there. Uh, what I'd really say as you're sculpting is not to worry about anyone else's style. You have your own style, um, you have your own methods, um, whether that's, you know, it can be it can be kind of a messy slapdash style, it can be, you know, harsh lines, it can be soft, you know, I love the way everyone's way of sculpting is very different it just creates something that you know you what you create is something I could never 
create myself and I love that. good technique is to look at one side and add something to the other side equally um, so you don't go too far on one side and forget the other side kind of try and keep it equal Add something to one side and then I kind of just look at each side and I decide, so I use my hand and I just look at each side and decide which side do I like better. So rather than straight away evening out each side, think very carefully which side do I like best. Do I need to take off from this side or do we need to add on to that side? I'm going to add my eyes later. Um, I'm going to expect we're going to look at eyes later, so we can experiment with that. But for now, um, it can be helpful just to add in a couple of eyes, just to get a sense of how how the eyes might work. And you can just that just gives you an idea of how the eyes might work. So looking really carefully at expression. Um, little things can make a big difference. Think about eyebrows. So, you know, if we if we kind of go for angles like that, if we go for angles like that, that makes him look quite kind of angry. Um, if we go kind of underneath, he looks a bit more, a bit more innocent. So thinking about the energy that your puppet is giving out, these lines, um, a lot of my lines are kind of going down, so this character uh, seems, you know, he can be a bit, a bit grumpy, maybe a little bit sad. Um, if the energy is coming forward, you, you kind of think about the energy coming forward out of the puppet, sort of through the nose. I think thinking about energy and and the lines is quite an important thing. So what I would do is when I'm happy with my shapes I would start kind of really kind of getting them defined, kind of neatening things off a little bit. Um, you don't need to go this neat, it depends um, It depends because this is just a draft which you're going to follow with the next material but I find um, trying to define it a little bit will help me in this next stage when I'm working with the material I'm not really used to working with so now it's just a case of just really kind of fine tuning and getting things a little bit neater so here I've neatened it off a little bit starting to get the shapes that I like um, I'm loving all these kind of triangular shapes going on I've still got it quite different on both sides. I'm adding in some ears. The ears are my favourite part of um, a puppet. So now I've just added um, this lovely beard here, which creates a really nice kind of round shape around the face. I really like that. However, at this stage, you've got to really think, what is this character? This guy is old and he's a bit twisted. He's a little bit evil, so I need to alter this because he's looking too happy at the moment. So I'm gonna to start to think about how can I make him look a little bit more evil. It's a little bit more evil than that side there. I quite like that. I'm going to add it to the other side. It's often recommended to go for a kind of a blank canvas so that you can experiment with just very simple angles of the head. 
So if your character already has an expression, they're kind of stuck in that expression. It kind of limits you in a way. But I often go directly against this because I enjoy experimenting with facial expressions. I'm happy with this as a basic template from which I'm going to transfer through the clay that we made. I've added enough detail to follow as a template, but I haven't finished it off. I'm not neating in this up because it's a waste of my time. That's what I'm going to do with my actual material. So what we're doing here is we're just going to slowly build up the features, not in detail, but just in the rough form, first of all. So you're just getting the rough shape of it, slowly building it up. And like I say, really focus on getting it as small as you can because I have found while working with this it just becomes so big and then you have to hack it away later on. This material takes a couple of days to dry or you can dry it in the oven even if you've got a polystyrene ball in there you can dry it in the oven so you have got a long time to do this sculpt. I normally spend about half a day just perfecting this so you've got plenty of time, it doesn't dry out easily and again you can put cling film over it to protect it if you want more time. So just being really patient, adding little bits at a time and building up slowly. Make sure you can keep moving it around and that you've got it secure with a bit of clay at the back just so you can keep moving it around. So already here I can see as I've put my fingers on there and I'm putting my fingers here, I can see that this is becoming a lot bigger already. It's good if you spot this earlier on and then you can just start taking some of that material off and bringing it in. The earlier you spot that, the better because it's harder to take apart when you've got more face. And again, really looking at each side just to make sure that it's it's even so one side isn't bigger than the other so what I find really useful as well is working from the top of the head just to look at the the angles of the things that I'm placing and just kind of gently pressing it down onto the ball just to get get it stuck on there um, you can use your fingers as well to just adjust things as you go. So, you've added the features onto the ball, you're feeling quite happy with how it is in its basic form. What I'd like you to do now is work around your sculpt and get it as neat as you can. So it's looking at all these little lumps and bumps and getting them as smooth as you can. You can also start adding in some detail some lines making it really nice and clear. This is almost like a meditative practice. It's very calming, just being very careful with everything you do, just making sure we're adding in all that detail. It will dry completely rock solid, so all these bumps will be solid. So get it as neat as you can, but later on what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand it and I'm gonna show you how to polyfill it so we can get a nice smooth look. Okay, so when you've finished, what I tend to do is find a way of just very delicately popping it off the base, really carefully, making sure you don't squash it anywhere. And then taking the clay off the back, just making sure that you are happy with how this blends in to your ball, it's making it nice and neat and then I would just rest it very carefully on there and let it dry for around two days um, or you can put it in the oven at about 100 degrees for a couple of hours and that will dry it out as well. I've even tried it with the polystyrene ball and it was okay. So just a case of just neatening up those edges and again when it dries this is something we can touch up as well. When your head is dry, you can leave it like this, if you like, or we can create a smoother finish, a bit like these ones which I made earlier. 
using some high grade sandpaper to give it a good going over. However the material is very tough so you're not going to get it perfect, that's where the polyfiller comes in. If you've got a Dremel you can use that. So once you've had enough of doing the sanding and gone completely mad you can stop, get your polyfiller and then what you're going to do is just gently push this into all the creases just smoothing it all over it is a bit it's a bit crumbly and a bit rough but don't worry about that because once it dries it's really easy to sand off if you've got if you're filling in the nose for example you can use this just to gently take some out but it's a good idea to fill in the creases because it tidies it all up Okay, so I've just polyfilled all over this. I've used my little pokey thing just to take some of it out of the wrinkles and neaten it up a little bit. Um, I'm still not quite happy with this, so I'm gonna let it dry. Use a low grade sandpaper just to brush all over it and clean it up. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more polyfiller just to neaten it up again even more. So you can do this in stages. So while your heads are drying, we're going to have a little think about teeth, eyes and hair. There's many options for this. So the first option is that once you've finished your head, you can use the clay that we made to sculpt in some teeth. Um, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use Milliput. That's a two part clay which is absolutely fantastic. You mix it together and you can create little teeth, get them drying. Um, probably takes about a night to dry it goes rock hard and then you can we can put all these little teeth in later once I've painted that and finished it I would put them teeth in um, be careful though if you're making something big with Miller put in performance if it encounters friction or if you drop it it can crack but for teeth I'd say that's all right the other option which I use for teeth is I use plaster's oat which is a fantastic material and um, you can cut your teeth apply them later and then PVA them to finish them off and then we can paint them. Um, if you don't have any of that, you've got Thick Card which is also a fantastic option. Go for Thick so it gives it a little bit of, um, bit of thickness, you don't necessarily want totally flat teeth. And again, we'll pop them in later with a bit of PVA and they'll work nicely. So we can prepare our teeth while the head's drying. So I've also just prepared a tongue um, out of plaster's oat which I'll stick in later for this character. Uh, this character's going to have a lot of teeth and a tongue and stuff like that. Um, but you could also prepare that out of card. So we'll stick that in later once we've finished it. So while my head's drying I start often to think about my eyes just in case they're going to require lots of layering. Um, I often use uh, polystyrene balls which I layer up with PVA, paint with acrylic and then finish off with some nice clear nail varnish, I'll show you that later. Um, I use googly eyes, I buy doll's eyes off eBay quite a lot or I use nice sparkly marbles. Ping pong balls are great for bigger puppets. I've also created some Milly put eyeballs along with my teeth just in case they work better um, but we've also got our clay eyes which you can then layer with polyfiller and sand or which I might do on this puppet is I might actually just paint the eyes directly straight onto the puppet so it might be something you want to think about now while the head's drying or we can have a look at it later on I'm gonna have a little think about hair I use a mixture of materials for hair, I use some natural things as well as more unusual materials. So looking at this lovely lady here, um, I first of all kind of explored the idea of using material, so you could stick that on, PVA it if you like, it would go hard. There's lots you can do with different material textures to create nice kind of hairstyles. Um, I've got fluff, fluff is lovely because you can PVA it and you can shape it any way you like and you can create really um, extravagant beautiful hairstyles with fluff that you 
could make hard with PVA. Um, this guy, I got some black material and I decided later on after I've painted him, I'm going to use this kind of, these really rigid sort of shapes to create a comb over effect on this guy. So I'm going to explore that later, but that doesn't need to happen now. Um, another thing I often use, I uh, use things like fluff. You can cut and shape this like um, you can give it a hairstyle, you can add in some PVA and you can create a real kind of really lovely hairstyles using fluff so that's really good. Sometimes I use real hair but for this lady I've decided I want to use this yarn so I'm going to create a parting with yarn. Okay so I'm going to make a yarn type hairstyle it's going to be in the style of how you imagine a doll's hair to be. Now I'm totally making this up myself and I'm experimenting. I've never made hair like this ever so this is totally new for me. So what I've done, I've got a bit of material and I'm just creating a simple strip there and I'm putting some PVA or Mod Podge or whatever you have on there. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to chop this in half. This is going to be one side of my hair and I'm going to very carefully stick it down onto there. Like so I'm getting it lined up there and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very carefully get my PVA and paint it in there making sure that is completely soaked through so it dries solid. So I've just glued the hair and I'll leave that overnight to dry. So I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment for hair for this puppet now. I like the spaghettiness of this string and I want it to kind of hang on the puppet so it's kind of like going up like that in a crazy kind of stringy way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it all in PVA, just completely soak it in PVA. And then I'm going to just thin it out a little bit and then I'm going to dry it upside down and see what kind of shapes it dries into. So once you're happy with the finish you're just going to do one layer of Mod Podge or PVA just to prime it before we begin painting. So just to show you that once we've put PVA on the polyfiller you've got this lovely kind of smooth look to the puppet head. So we're painting puppet heads. I'm going to talk you through a couple of the techniques that I use when I'm doing my puppet heads. What you're going to need is a sponge like this and I cut small pieces just so that I can blend and shade with. You might prefer to use a paintbrush, you might find methods that you prefer, so this is just my way of doing it. I always keep my costume to hand so I've got a sense of the colours that I'm working with. If you haven't got a costume then I just keep the materials I might use, stuff like that. Or even some images. Let's crack on. We're going to begin by mixing a base layer. This is your darkest colour. So we're going to start with that and we're going to work up with the lighter colours. Using your sponge, what I do just very nicely cover the whole of the puppet with your base layer. Okay so we've got our first base coat done there now we are going to add approximately four more layers to this each layer is progressively getting lighter. Okay so I've mixed up a slightly lighter version of my base here what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna dab a little bit on the end there not too much paint to start with and just give it a little try, see what it looks like. And what we're going to do is we're going to very gently just dab it along the main features. 
The idea is to just gently blend it in to your base. The aim is eventually we have all the layers on and they just blend really nicely together and you've got this lovely kind of textured colour. So I've just done the first layer and as you can see it's, it's quite subtle but it, it gives a little bit more definition. I'm going to let it dry on the head here and then I'm going to turn around and we're going to have a look at, at the back of the head. Okay, so I've just added a third layer to my grey man. So he's coming along. I've added a third layer to this lady, which is very subtle, so it might take me a bit of a while building her up. And now we're going to go back to our man here and I'm going to start a third layer. So again, it's just picking a shade lighter. It looks quite bright sometimes when you first put it on, but as it dries, it will it will blend so it's very gently just working that around the features blending that in when you've finished your painting let it dry fully then you're going to apply one layer of acrylic primer PVA or Mod Podge just something that dries nice and clear and gives it a good finish so we're going to have a look at eyeballs and teeth. What I'm going to do is, because these eyeballs are so small, I'm going to add a base coat to them here, let them dry, then stick them on the puppet and add the detail in after that, because they're very hard to hold because they're so small. I'm going to paint the teeth and add the detail to the teeth on the puppet as well. So with your base coat, what you want is, you want not white but you want an off-white so add the smallest dab of black because white can be pretty intense so i've stuck the eyes on with two part epoxy resin and just let that dry overnight so i'm just going to begin by creating a large dark circle on each puppet so i then do a second layer on the eyeballs and because they're so small um i can't get a lot of detail into these and I don't actually have any small brushes so I'm going to be building up around the eyes afterwards so they won't look as stark as this. So I've just layered the eyeballs up and then when you're finished with them you want to give them a coat of clear nail varnish if you've got it or some clear varnish. It'll just give them a little spark. I've also started to get this guy's teeth in so I've just used a bit of clay or milliput to create some gums and then I'll dry them overnight. I've created some eyelids out of milliput and I've just stuck them on with two part resin. Just makes the eyes look a little bit more natural and less bulgy. But you could also make these out of clay if you prefer. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint the eyelids now. I'm gonna do two layers. I'll do a darker layer and then I'll dab a lighter layer on top. Then I'll put some PVA on just to finish it and that's the eyelids done. I'm also going to do the same with the teeth so it's just a bit of careful painting and if you've got small brushes here it's really helpful. Unfortunately I only have quite big brushes so that is something I definitely need to invest in in the future. So we're going to make our handles and our head attachments. If you've got two puppets working together you are going to need to attach your head and if you have a puppet that uses two hands then you will detach your head and you'll need to create a handle. So if you've got a detached head, we're gonna go ahead and make the handle. What I've got is I've got a piece of dowel and I've measured it for five inches. I've found this is optimal for handle size and you're gonna need some coat hanger wire and ideally you're gonna need about 17 centimeters. I'm going to explain better how I've worked this out. So I experimented with an angle like this. Then I've put it into my head here. And then I'm pretending my handle is around there. And I'm just exploring the comfortable central position of that head on my hand there. Now turning the head to the right is no problem for sight lines for the audience. But when you turn the head to the left, the hand could potentially 
get in the way of the puppet. So what we're going to probably do is angle this piece of wire upward a little bit so that the handle is a little bit above the hand so when we turn this hand doesn't cause any sightline issues with the puppet. So you can have a little play with that yourself. So how this will work roughly four centimeters goes into the head and then we have four centimeters this end which goes into the stick. So you're going to need to just cut that. Wire is really easy to cut if you just make a little a little mark like that and then just bend it and it will just loosen up and you should just be able to snap that off. Give it a little bit of bending. There we go. And that loosens off there. So there's one stick. Okay, so you've cut your handles and you've got your pieces of wire here. What I'd recommend is that at the end of your wire you just make some little grooves in there so that when we stick them in the stick if it becomes loose in any way it's got more to bind to there. What you're going to do is you're going to drill a very small hole about four centimeters down so it's a nice tight fit in there. What you can do if you don't have any dowel you could use a pencil or an old bit of spoon or an old paintbrush you could simply just gaffer that on there but it might be a a bit rickety but what I'd recommend is you could use an epoxy two-part resin and you could just stick it on there that's as well if you don't have a drill um, or you could PVA it with strips of paper and that'll be solid as well so what I'm going to use now to get that in there is I'm going to use this from BNQ just a, a two-part epoxy resin to make sure it's really really tough and then leave that overnight to dry so with the two part epoxy resin, just make sure you get exactly the same amounts of each in there, otherwise it will struggle to dry and it won't be as effective. It's about equal there. Make sure you mix it really thoroughly. Then we're just going to apply it into the hole. It's pretty tough because it's so small. And we're just going to poke it in there. It's going to be pretty tough. We're just going to poke as much down in there as we can. Once you're satisfied, once you've got it all in, leave it overnight to dry and that will go rock solid. What I'd also recommend you do for these handles is just give the edges, these corners here, give them a nice little sand so that the puppeteers don't get scratched and if you want to be really fancy you can add fabric to them so they're nice and soft and they've got a nice grip. But I'm going to just sand mine and paint them black with a bit of a primer on top. Okay, so we're going to attach our head to our rod that we've just made. What you're going to need to do is look for the centre point of the nose and then mark exactly, well, roughly where you think that centre point is in the back. Then you're going to need to drill a small hole and you can just have a little fiddle with it, just have a little play. What I would aim for is when you attach it, you leave it drying so that it you can operate it at a slightly slightly higher angle if you operate it um, on a level angle to the head it just makes it a little bit more difficult and may involve some blocking of the body in the puppet show so I would I would glue it a little bit higher than the head at an angle it just makes it a lot easier in terms of the manipulation but you can have a little play with that and see what kind of works for you so if you're attaching your head to your body so that you can work two hands at the same time we're going to do that now too so we don't need to worry too much about the angle at the moment that will come later uh, but what we're going to do we're going to cut two pieces of wire like this these are approximately 15 centimeters each and what I've done is about four centimeters at the top I've just bent it over into a right angle like this what we're going to do 
This is going to stick into the head. We're going to have two, so they're going to be in the head and they're going to stick kind of like that. So they come down into the costume and create a support. So once the ends have dried in the head, we can have a look at angling the head properly. How I'm imagining it will be is that the head uh, will try and fix it a little bit higher than we imagine, aiming higher so that it comes down and the gaze is fixed straight on. So we don't want the head ending up at a strange angle or drooping. We want to work really hard to make sure that head is properly angled. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the centre point of the nose and I'm going to look at the back here and I'm going to create a little mark with my pen somewhere around there then I'm going to get my drill and I'm going to drill a hole that's a bit bigger because I've got these two pieces of wire and I'm going to drill carefully Okay, so I've just been having a fiddle and I think it's really worth developing your shape of wire so it fits as best as you possibly can to the angle that you feel is gonna work for the head. So I've bent this into this shape because when I put that in there like that, that will stick in there and then it fits flush roughly with the back of the head. It goes nicely around the head. Then it allows this angle which goes on a bit of a curve and I think that will work really nicely inside the body when it attaches. So now you want to leave all of your sticks in position to dry overnight. Keep them balanced and hopefully they'll dry in the right position. Okay so I'm starting to think about attaching this head what I've done is I've just used the pliers just to bend the wire into position and I've stuck it inside the body. So you can just see, I've just stuck it in there. So what I've done is I've just used a bit of um, needle and thread just to tack it in at these ends and at the ends here, two ends here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a strip of material which I've coated in PVA and I'm just going to apply that on top of the wire and let it dry overnight. So I've got my strips in there, this is very fiddly, there might be, you might find another way of doing this but what I'm going to do is just make sure that that is all stuck down there and I'm going to let that dry overnight. Okay so once you've got the wire dry inside you'll find that you can bend this head, the angle of it very easily to whichever angle you like but when you're wearing the glove you can also do really nice subtle things with the hand like that which allows the puppet to move and look around so this is so you can operate two at the same time now with this one I'm going to attach the hair I don't have any super glue in the house so I'm going to use some contact adhesive so I've put a bit on the head and a bit on my strips of hair here and it's touch dry and now I'm just going to apply it to the head like that. I'm going to squeeze that together so it looks nice and neat as possible. Thank you so much for joining me on this hand puppet tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed the creative process. Please do send us your photographs. I hope to see you again soon. Bye!